Dirt Farmer J here from DirtFarmerJ.com. Today we're going to do an unboxing and quick assembly of a Solo Backpack Sprayer. It's their diaphragm pump model. This model is the 475-101. We're going to look and see what comes in the box. The pre-assembled unit right here, as you can see, it's pretty much assembled. You can see it's uh, ready to attach the actual wand onto the end right there. So there's the trigger assembly and all of that. Uh, going around the side of the unit, you can see it uh, already has the straps attached as well. So all of that is there ready to go. Now secondly what comes in is a bag that has some other parts. As you can see right here, here's the plastic bag. I just sliced it open. Here you have the strainer container that goes in the top of the uh, tank itself. There is a set of different tips and filters that come down here. And then there is the screw-on cap that goes on the top of the unit itself. Let's not forget a great instruction manual. It doesn't take very long to go through it, and it's a very complete, including some, as you see right there, some different sequencing of parts, which are all included to build different patterns that you want for your spray. A couple more things. One is the handle that will end up going uh, attached to the side that you operate while you're carrying this on your back. And then also we have the actual wand itself here that uh, attaches very quickly. It comes pre-assembled with a strainer and the brass adjustable nozzle that just allows you to do um, general purpose spraying. It is one of the combination listed right here on this. It's actually number two right here uh, that shows that, that pattern, okay? One other point before we actually get to the assembly of the unit, and that is why does Solo offer two different kinds, a piston pump and a diaphragm pump? Well, the answer is actually right here in the manual itself. And if you look here, it says model 425, which is not the one we have. That is the piston type, is for liquids only. Model 475-101, which is what we are looking at today, is for wettable powders, water-soluble solutions, and liquids including bleach. However, if you use bleach, you can only use the plastic parts uh, that comprise a spray nozzle because the bleach is corrosive of the other items. Okay, let's get started assembling the unit. First of all, in the earlier part of the video, I called this the wand. It is not. It is the actual handle unit, and it's what's going to allow you uh, to operate the spray unit when it's at pressure. Here's the pre-assembled unit. All you're going to do is install this. It's really simple. You're just going to take that unit, insert it right here, and screw down the collar here. It's pretty foolproof. It just goes in really easily. And this is where you would adjust whether you like the handle to be under your palm or under your fingers. So the way this is set up right now, I would spray it this way. If I wanted to be doing it the other way, I would turn it this way and then tighten it down. Don't over tighten it. It's all plastic and you can feel when it's, it's right. So there we go. This unit is ready to go on this part of it on the spray handle itself as well as the wand, okay? Now the second order of business is to install the pump handle. And this is what allows you to build pressure using uh, the diaphragm that's built on the unit. Here's the thing to remember with the handle. The handle needs to be installed this direction with this going towards the operator, towards where you'll be operating it. And in its stow position, it sits just like this. We're going to start by putting the bolt through, and what you're going to do is rotate this back and forth until you can see the threads appear, uh, and it'll take a little finessing to do that. They are threaded on the shaft, and when you go ahead and drive that in, notice that there's a washer on there because you want the head of the bolt to bear on that instead of crushing the handle. And when this comes through, not only is it threading on both sides of the shaft itself, but then to make sure everything remains securely, Solo provides you a nylon insert nut that'll stop the vibration or just use of time backing that off. I'm not going to take time to tighten it up. You just put your wrenches on it and tighten it up. Now, you now have the unit almost completely installed. The only thing you need to do at this point, use this strainer basket on the top. It simply drops in the top like this. So this goes down in below the surface and it just kind of sets along in there. So then you would simply screw this on and it just screws in. And once it bottoms out, the unit is ready to put on. The last thing we're gonna do is attach the straps uh, down to the bottom of the frame. And uh, there's kind of a, 
uh, high pressure hook that goes on there. It takes a little finessing again to get that on. I'll show you the trick that I do to get them on there. First of all, take the unit, put it on its back. You're going to take the hook. There's the hook right there. As you can see, the diameter there is under pressure. It's going to be significantly smaller than that. But to get it on there, I just use one of these um, ratchet type of clamps uh, like this and simply use it to assist on pressure and go ahead and push that in like that. There it is. And there you have that clipped on there. Uh, so you would just simply step and repeat. Do the other side right there and the unit is ready to use at that point. If you have any insights about this type of equipment or this particular unit, feel free to offer it up there for other uh, listeners and viewers as well. And be sure to visit our other areas on DirtFarmerJ.com. There's all sorts of areas related to culinary arts, yard work, yard equipment, gardening, all sorts of things we think you'd enjoy. It. Until the next time, I'm Dirt Farmer Jay from DirtFarmerJ.com.